What's happening, folks? I wanted to take a look at a handful of things, and I'm just kind of going to run the film. I'm not going to edit it too heavy. I may have a few pieces where I do um, kind of cut it and move elsewhere, like if I don't have nothing to say or whatever. But um, a few things I want us to look at. First, I want us to look at Jalen Smith. Then I want us to look at the defensive line. Then I want to look at the finish, like how we tackled, you know, if we tackled well or not. Um you know, just to kind of draw some conclusions on what's going on with the defense. You know, if if draft season is right around the corner, you know, I don't think many of us are necessarily looking towards offense. I know uh, Foots wants to draft a, a tight end. And I know I, I really get my O-line bag, you know. But I think that if we, if we have a better defense, then we'll have better field position, then we'll be a better offense. You know, if you look at some of the better defenses, um, you know, this year in the league, you know, it'll be the – the Patriots, 49ers, Saints, Ravens, you know, teams like that. Uh, they live and die off their defense. But then we look at some ex-Super Bowl champs that we look up to because they were so flashy on on offense. They're lacking in defense now. And they, you know, uh, their record would reflect that. You know, we're talking about the Rams and the, the Eagles here, you know. So I just wanted to take a look at our at our uh, at our defense and just kind of you know get some observation from it in my Law Nation voice. Get some observations here. We're looking at uh, Jalen first, then D line. Then then we're gonna look at how it uh, how we how we finish. Now just watching the first time, just watching as a fan or whatever. When it comes down to changing directions and all that, like we like Jalen kind of gets exposed a little bit. Um, you know, with the whole drop foot deal. Now, me and brother Okoye Media, go go over there and check him out on the YouTube. We're having a conversation about linebackers and where to put guys. Um, now, he's pro put Van Der Esch at Sam. You know, I feel I feel where he's, where he's coming from. I still think Van Der Esch got a, got a problem getting off blocks, and he's probably a better will linebacker. But I think the Sam guy that we should be looking at is Jalen Smith. Like, Jalen is the one guy that I don't want to – have to travel the longest distance to chase down plays. If anything, I want the play to come to him. Like on this last play, I think if it's inside the boxes, I think Jalen Smith is good to go. Um, whether you know whether these these linemen get to second level to try and block him or not, I think if we're in between the tackles, I think Jalen Smith is good to go. But take a look at this play where Jalen Smith has to decipher and travel a little bit. You kind of see Jalen's change of direction take a toll on him here. Take a look at Jalen here. Let's take a look at him, man. You see how long it took him to stop, start, change direction, and get going again. Like that's something that Van Der Esch is 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 really good at, um, and that, you know that that makes me want to put Vandy in the you know in the the um, the wheel spot and leave him there. But as of now, just uh, take a look at Jalen Smith and his change of direction. I think that's going to be something that's a that's a hindrance because if you look at it, just let's just just look at that, man. Stop, 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 turn around, then turn my whole body, then get going again. You know what I mean? And that makes me say, yo, I want Jalen to travel as less distance as I could possibly get him. And that's, you know, that's the Sam linebacker spot, you know, where all the, the drama comes to him. And then you could do some things creatively on defense with Jalen Smith playing the Sam. You know, he can go do pass rushy things without him having to come off the field on um, on third downs. You definitely don't want Jalen covering, really. And I think partially that's what the issue has been with the defense i think teams have just had like this same defense that we have now is the exact same defense we had last year like randy gregory robert quinn they're the same kind of guy to me you know they're they're super pass rushy guys but they they're kind of liabilities in the run game i don't want to say liability that's a bit rough but they're not d law in the run game there's a reason why tyron crawford was on his team still and he was doing dn things this is kind of this kind of what i want for Jalen. i don't want Jalen to chase things down backside if Jalen's going to be on the front side of the play and the play is going directly towards him this is exactly where I want Jalen to be the problem is I just can't have Jalen getting blocked by this tight end right this is the position I want Jalen to be in he just played it terribly he just played it absolutely you, you you can't let this this tight end block you and you know 60% of playing defense is, is just beating the guy in front of you. You know, you can scheme guys to run free if you like but uh, the job is to beat the guy in front of you 
This is one of the terrible play by Tristan Hill right here. Actually, um, Tristan Hill's getting down blocked so this uh, so this center can pull back around him. You see this left guard is going to block down on Tristan. Why is it called a down block? Hey, I guess if the play is going to the right, then we're blocking the opposite direction. I never really asked my coaches why it was called a down block, but he's down blocking on Tristan Hill. So Tristan's job is to either go over the top or to compress that gap. And he did that. He did that by pushing uh, a solid show of um show of power here hopefully he's he's uh getting better with that hopefully he, he can he can get some more power but to really compress that gap push that thing down to give the running back less room to navigate and if you see tristan pushing boom it creates this alley for sean lee to run down and make this play for sean lee and darian to make this play now darian got this wide angle here and he gets blocked that's terrible but um and sean lee kind of gets you know pushed in the back there who cares but it's sean lee's play to make and you know half of defense is making a play it's just making the play actually but um it's a combination of things that that could have been better Jalen being one of them because he definitely could have made that play too now this is a fantastic play right here talk about this for a second let me just run this play <clears throat> that's how it's supposed to look that's how it's supposed to look. I'm not opposed to Michael Bennett getting like first team reps. If if we can get two run defensive ends on the field, uh, Michael Bennett and um, Demarcus Lawrence on the field first, and then just kind of rotate Robert Quinn in as a as a pass rusher, I'm cool with that. But we've seen Robert Quinn and uh, D Law make plays like this, where they you know get untouched, but they run down the line of scrimmage flat and they make the play. Um, that's fantastic stuff. Also. Um, I don't mind Jalen taking a block here so Sean Lee can run free. Right? That's what that's what we got Darian here first taking this pull. We got Jalen taking this rap, and we got Sean Lee running free. That's dope. Now Sean Lee had to not get blocked by this uh by this backside tackle here by number seventy. I guess when you get to your landmark quick enough that works for you. Seventy kind of gets held up by Tristan. Let's see what's going on with Tristan. That's Tristan not being strong enough, but I tell you what. I don't like Tristan at one take. This is one thing I've been talking about, too. I don't like Tristan in A-gap. He doesn't belong in A-gap. Tristan, he need to be right here. <laughs> now, Malik Collins is a fantastic one take. We've seen him do it, you know? I think he may be a little better at one than he is at three sometimes. I don't know. It could be a size thing, but, um, you know, as an athletic one take, I like what Malik can do as an athletic one take, but I don't, I don't dig them putting Tristan at one. He's drafted to be an under tackle. In, in, in B gap. You know what I mean? So I, I just don't like him dealing with, with these fights, so to speak. I want he needs to be on the other side in in, in B gap fighting, you know, fighting 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 on the other side of things. But um that's just my my critique there. But Tristan could be could be stronger there. But I think that's what the offseason is gonna do for you there. So we'll just uh take that with a grain of salt. Who is this front side? Okay, let's see what, what uh Malik did. Uh, Malik kind of fought a little bit, but you know, nothing he can do. Is that Cody Ford fighting Malik? Mm, no, Cody Ford is the is seventy. Okay, cool. Cody, okay, cool. Cody Ford is the right tackle. In case y'all didn't know, Cody Ford was a offensive lineman that I wanted on this team really, really bad. I would have gave up everything to go get him because he's fantastic. But um, you know, y'all will learn more about my favorite draft prospects when draft season come around. We still got football season here, so. Let's see what happens on this play. Just to just to be curious, what happens on this play? Singletary gets outside, but what happened though? Yeah, Bennett reads it and he almost gets there. Uh, let's take a look at Jalen Smith and the long distance he has to travel. You know, Jalen didn't have to take that angle. That you know, he ended up blocking himself but you know what? i can't hate on that because it looked like if if devin singletary is going to pressure this gap then you kind of got to do something to you know deal with that gap i mean but the whole point of getting to the outside like if Jalen wouldn't have pressured that gap because sometimes you ain't got to make every tackle your job ain't to make every single tackle you know sometimes if Jalen just keeps this thing wide 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 and he's athletic enough to do it Jalen running into this block gave Singletary enough space to get to the outside but if Jalen would have just stayed straight then Singletary would bounce back 
And bouncing back is what we want because we have help bouncing back, right? If Jalen would have gotten to this point to set this edge that wasn't set, um, let's see, Bennett got inside, so we needed, who was that, uh, 20, <laughs> Darian Thompson again? So, yeah, Darian Thompson set the edge the first time, but, hey, if Jalen would have worked his way outside and not got blocked, then Singletary would cut back inside and run into Sean Lee or run into one of these tackles or D-Law coming backside or Malik Collins. You see what I'm saying? You know, every play ain't always got to be yours to make. Sometimes you just got to do what's best for the greater good of the defense. And uh, I think Jalen Jalen just took a, you know, took an angle that indicated he wanted to make that play but you know let somebody else make that play jay my cable bill was way too high i reached out to affordablesticks.com they sent me a fire stick plug that thing into the hdmi now i get unlimited shows movies and live tv i'm a huge sports fan so i love league pass sunday ticket and i get the pay-per-view fights for free that's something for the whole family you can buy a fire stick for every tv in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable that's affordablesticks.com there's a link in my description you should go click it cut the cord man Hey, if they're going to double-team Malik front side, this shit better happen. So <laughs> they're going to run to the right. That makes Malik the front side uh, uh, B-gap player tackle or whatnot. Hey, if they're going to double him, this shit here, it's better happen every time. <laughs> it's better happen every time, man. Uh, you know, it, somebody front side better be in an easy fight. So if it's boom, shh, we got one puller rapper so darren thompson would in theory be the open open alley guy to make this tackle here um and that's kind of what happens but that's what that's what team defense supposed to be you know what i mean like somebody taking the bullet so somebody else can can you know can run free as far as Jalen goes skating 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 hey man just get blocked by somebody because Jalen skating too far like Jaden, like Jalen skating like he's doing, like he could run himself out of the play. Like if anything was to happen and Jalen is skating this way and there's block pressure here and the running back goes this way, then Jalen wouldn't be in good position to stop him, right? Jay, just just play your gap. Play your gap. This this is Sean Lee and Darian Thompson's work over here. If it gets outside, then um then um then we have Michael Bennett here. If it goes this gap, the, if it goes the alley right there, then we got Darian Thompson ready to clean this thing up. Sean Lee's going to take this block, and that's what the greater good of the defense is. We don't need you to make every single play. I think that might be a thing moving forward. Next time we watch Jalen Smith, let's see if he's doing too much. Let's see if he's being gap integral because um, we got to uphold the integrity of the gap. I'm going to watch a few more plays of this Bills game, and then I'm going to get into um, – that's a throw to single tear. Then I'm going to get into the Bears game. That upset my little soul as well, but uh, let's let's watch this play. Then we'll move on. It's the last one. Then we'll move on. Let's see. This is how I used to watch film, by the way. This was like when I when I was first a YouTuber, for um, when I was first YouTubing in draft mode. This was this was the first thing I used to do. This was the first thing I used to do. Ooh. That's a heavy pursuit to the outside, Sean Lee and Jalen, but. I don't know what y'all jobs are necessarily, but it got taken care of. Let's see. What about your, uh, what about your D line? Let's see what Michael Bennett did. Set the edge fantastically, man. Look at look at look at Michael Bennett, man. Just just get to the outside, setting the edge. If anything comes outside, okay. So that's part of my point too, right? Like if Michael Bennett is the one setting setting up C gap. I don't need Jalen all the way <laughs> going. Well, it's more like a D gap because he's on the outside of tight end. But if 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 we got Michael Bennett setting the edge. I don't need Jalen outside the edge right now because it'll open up a lot of space on the inside. If Sean can't make this, like not not Sean, but if uh, Kerry Hyder don't make this tackle, it's a lot of space up here. It's just vacant, you know. Like earlier, I made a video about run fits and how we should be more, you know, um, more secure with our run fits and not doing too much and not doing somebody else's job, just doing ours. I think that's a problem that we've been dealing with all year. I'm lying. Let me watch one more. Play from this Bill game, then we'll get out of here and move on to the um, Bears game. Let's see what young what young Tristan did in a gap that I can't stand. <laughs> but hey, uh, Antoine uh, Antoine Woods got caught with uh got 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 caught with weed weed on a dashboard and a and a gun under. The, hey, my cousin, my son. I want to say my cousin. Uh, Antoine Woods got got caught with weed in the in the glove box and a gun under the seat. So. So we needed one tech help. So we got Christian Covington, and that's pretty much it. So, you know, I don't want Tristan that one tech, but he kind of got to play one tech. But let's see what happens here. 
Let's see what happens here. We're going to get a push from the da, 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 hanging in there. Listen, man, my son Tristan going to get strong as hell, and he's going to keep that burst and speed that he got, and he's going to get big, and he's going to be like 21 next year or some, some weird shit like that. And Tristan going to be good, man. I hate when when every time Juan Thornhill and um, what's his face and Taylor Rapp make a play, Every time they make a play, it's like, oh, Vibes, did you see that? Vibes, did you see Thornhill and Taylor Wright make a play? I'm like, fam, <laughs> they're making plays because they're in the game. They better make a play because they're in the game. Tristan just made a play because he's in the game, right? Tristan's just not ready to play yet. It's, e- it's easier to come in and play safety than it is to come in and play defensive tackle in the league. And if anybody wants to debate that, I'll get on this phone on this daggum live stream and make you look silly. But, um... Um, and that's not me down down playing DBs. Like you know, if you fast enough and you and you read and you read defense good enough, cool. But if you're a defensive tackle, I mean, you can <laughs> you can read all you want, but you still got to overpower this other grown man in front of you that's been doing it for a while. So, like, let's give Tristan like a year or two to really get his grown man body and get his um, get his strength up. You know what I'm saying? Give him a glass of milk and a a dumbbell and a sandwich, and we'll see him grow. It'd be great. Last play, I promise, on this. Then we're going to go check out the Bears and how they made us feel bad. This may be a part one, part two video. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to see it all. After canceling my cable, I saved $2,400 this year by switching to Beast TV through channelsforcheap.com. Some people pay $200 plus a month. I paid $120 a year. Or you can go $15 a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get 2,500 HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels, TV Guide, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is multi-screen feature. So if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time. That you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Stick, Smart TVs, Tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven-day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. If you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.